Okay, let's continue with our series on um, universal programs and uh, we'll talk about universality theorem. This is where we left off in our previous screencast. So for n positive, uh, there is this function which is partially computable. And that is what we have to show. So um, what do we, what exactly do we have to show in this proof? So we must um, show that um, there is a program in our language L. Um, this is our uh, formalism that we have been using. Um, so there's a program in L uh, that um, computes uh, phi. So and that's the function um, in the universality theorem. So effectively we would like to add this macro to our uh, language L. y equals phi of n x1 through xn and then xn plus 1 where uh, x1 through xn are inputs uh, to uh, the program, an arbitrary program uh, whose value or whose number um, is uh, the value of um, uh, xn plus 1. So some arbitrary program p and l. Right, and its value is placed um, into uh, x uh, n plus 1. So the first thing that um, our operating system will do is it will uh, take uh, the value of x n plus 1 and uh, extract the source code. So, and, uh, so z um, uh, will uh, uh, contain, contains the number of the uh, source code. Right? So we've just, um, with this operation, we've extracted uh, the source code um, of this arbitrary program um, P. So recall that um, uh, the number of P, right, is this girdle number um, whose first component is the uh, number of the first instruction, and then the second component is the number of the second instruction, and then uh, all the way down to uh, some instruction uh, k, right? So every program has a finite number of instructions minus one. So this is the source, and we need to uh, extract it and put it um, in the value of z. And so <coughs> p, uh, the number of p plus one, uh, gives us the source, and that's now the value of z. So we've just extracted the source code. Now. Uh, the next step that the operating system u sub n um, does is it initializes the program state. Um, so s arrow s is a variable, right? We just added it to um, our uh, language L. Uh, we can rename it with a, uh, another variable, but um, uh, it's a girdle number, uh, the product of the uh, primes in even places, right? The first prime, the second prime, the third prime, and so forth. So uh, this is, um, we've just initialized uh, the program state where it keeps track of all the variables used by the program, the input variables and the um, internal variables. And the first variable um, in the state of the program is, is y. Right. So recall that uh, this is the state of the program, right? It's a girl number. Uh, you can watch the previous screencasts on this. So the first uh, element is the value of y, the second element is the value of x1, the third element is the value of z1, and then the value of x2, and then the value of z2. So um, uh, this is the value of um, uh, the power of the second prime, right? And these powers, right, are actually initially uh, are given um, as the inputs to our program. And then the third thing that we need to do now that we have the source uh, and uh, we've initialized the state of the program, uh, we need to initialize the instruction counter and we set it to one. This is where we initialize the instruction. We, essentially the operating system will be uh, will keep on executing and looping through the instructions, executing one uh, then one by one, not necessarily in the order because we have dispatches, right? Go to some label, right? So this is our instruction counter and it calls the, the instruction which is about to be executed, the next instruction to be executed in the source code. Okay, so this is the instruction counter. Okay, um, 
So uh, now, uh, when does the oper operating system stop uh, terminating, uh, uh, executing, uh, st uh, stops uh, executing the program? So in other words, what is the termination uh, condition? So we keep on executing these instructions, right? Uh, and then we have to stop at some point. So uh, there are two uh, termination conditions uh, for uh, when UN simply stops. Right, so the first one is uh, when uh, we simply execute, uh, when it has executed all of the instructions and the instruction counter is uh, the length of the source code plus one. So we go one past uh, the length of the uh, program. Right, uh, that's the number of say. Or uh, when uh, the instruction counter is equal to zero. When does that happen? As we will see, it happens when uh, uh, the control is dispatched to a label that doesn't exist. So if we say if uh, something is true, then go to let's say A100 and A100 does not exist, so uh, K is set to zero and um, uh, UN terminates with whatever value um, uh, is in Y, right? And that's uh, considered to be the output. Right now, um, this doesn't preclude uh, UN um, looping forever if there's an inv infinite loop uh, in the program that it is executed. So, so let's continue. So C is the label for continue. So if K is equal to uh, the length of Z plus one, or K is equal to zero, we go to uh, E. We exit. So um, C can be thought of as the continue label, right? We'll keep on continuing. Um, I check the, this condition, and if continue condition is uh, full uh, uh, is true, then uh, then go to E. Okay, and then E is exit. No, the next thing that we uh, now have to do is we need to decode uh, the next instruction. So U N at this point uh, must uh, decode, right? So K uh, is, um, uh, K is um, uh, the counter, the instruction counter, and it codes the number of the next instruction. So, and just to remind you that the instruction consists of, uh, the way the instructions are coded, um, they include the label, right? That's their uh, first element, and then um, uh, the type of the instruction, that's the second element. Uh, we've used the pairing functions to encode uh, instructions. And then there is the uh, uh, variable number, the variable used uh, uh, that is used in that instruction. Now remember, we're executing the UN only operates on primitive instructions, not on macros. All of the macros um, uh, uh, are uh, turned into primitives. So uh, Z um, uh, sub K, that's the access function, is this pair um, whose second element is pair itself, and A is the number of the label, B uh, encodes the instruction type, um, right, plus minus no op or uh, conditional dispatch, and C is the number of the label used in the instruction minus one. All right, so let's uh, restate it over here. Z uh, uh, sub K is this uh, pair A of pair B and C. Okay, so um, uh, let's say that U is uh, the um, right element of Z sub K, right? So that means that uh, U is equal to B, C, right? This pair. So uh, C um, is... Um, the variable number minus uh, minus one, right? That's the variable, capital V, uh, minus one, right? So that means that um, the number of the variable in the variable order and used in the instruction is R of U plus one. So the next question is, uh, what is P sub R of U plus one, right? P, uh, right, it is R of U plus first prime. It's a prime in our prime ordering with the first prime being two, the second being three, and, and so forth, infinitely many primes, such that p to the value of that variable, small v, divides s, right? Small v is the value of that big v, right? v uh, is um, the mm, value of that variable, so in other words, uh, s, uh, right, 
of ru sub ru plus one, right? That's the accessor function, which is primitive recursive. Um, so v is the small v is the value of big V, the variable used in this instruction. Uh, so let's go through uh, a quick example. So let's suppose that our state is um, 0, 2, 0, 1. So 3 to the second times 7, which is um, 63, right? Uh, so y is equal to 0, the value of x1 is 2, the value of z1 is 0, and the value of um, x2 is 1. So let's say that uh, u is uh, equal to the pair of b and 1 for some value of b which is not really important at, at this point. So r of u is 1, which is equal to the number of the variable in the ordering minus 1, right? This is 1. So r of u plus 1 is 2. And 2 is the number of x1 in our ordering of uh, variables. So remember, y is the first, then x1 is the second, then z1, and then x2, and so forth. So um, this big V, capital V, uh, is x1. That's the variable used in the instruction. And uh, P of um, uh, sub R of u plus 1 is um, P2, uh, the second prime, which is 3. So um, if let V small v uh, be the value, of uh, x1, so then uh, um, v is equal to uh, s accessor function of ru plus 1, and our state then is equal to um, 2. So, and 3 to the second divides uh, 63. All right, so uh, we're going to leave it here with this thought uh, that p to the v uh, always divides the state, and this is to be continued.